Apple unveiled the newest iPhone model. This announcement, however, much more low key than those in the past. It's the first since Steve Jobs stepped down as Apple's CEO. Here's Sandra Hughes. Well, we've all heard horror stories about someone paying a contractor thousands of dollars for a down payment only to never hear from them again. Now, in today's It's Your Money report, Wake Up Alabama's Tiffany Westry tells us how much is too much for home improvement down payments. Check out this video of a dust storm in Tucson, Arizona. It's being blamed on a series of accidents along a major interstate. At least two dozen vehicles smashed into each other when drivers had a hard time seeing. Police say one person died and at least a dozen others were seriously injured. Very, mm, very, very scary, scary situation. situation. I mean, we don't have a lot of dust storms or anything in this part, but uh, we are catching the breeze here and there. Not yes, enough to we are. cause a Nothing storm, like that, think. thank goodness, right, Kaylee? <laughs> yeah. Your voting location may change soon. A series of meetings are planned across Alabama on redrawing district lines. That's because the state's population is shifting. The changes will affect all regions, and you have a say in this, you know. Hearings are scheduled for tomorrow, October 6th, in Clan, Pelham, and Birmingham. The Clan meeting starts at noon at the Holiday Inn on Bradbury Lane. The meeting in Pelham begins at 245 at the Pelham Civic Center. In Birmingham, where the third meeting will take place, it is scheduled for 6.30 at the Sheraton. Long lines are creating a nightmare in the middle of the day at the Jefferson County Courthouse. Anger, frustration, confusion is becoming a common sense in Birmingham and Bessemer since the immigration law went into effect. People are waiting four to five hours for registrations or renewals. Federal aviation officials are investigating a deadly helicopter crash in New York City. The chopper with five people aboard came down in the East River on Tuesday, killing one passenger. The victim was on a private tour with the group for her birthday. The pilot and three others are recovering. But well, here's the curtain call. At some point or another, most of us have enjoyed a theatrical performance. Absolutely. Whether it was a school play or a Broadway production, seeing it all unfold on a stage is just kind of simply amazing to put it into words. Yes, it is. And speaking of Broadway, Les Mis and Rob is now showing at the BJCC. Very famous book and play, so you need to check that out. But this morning, let's kind of flip the focus. Instead of sitting in the audience, I'm taking you behind the scenes to show you a quick glance of what you don't see. Without a doubt, the Broadway spectacular Les Miserables is a favorite of many. But do you ever think about the effort it takes to put on a production of its magnitude? In this instance, the entire show travels with everything from lights to costumes, even the stage floor. They'll focus the lighting, they'll have a sound check, the orchestra will come in, the cast will join, and then it all becomes theater magic. That magic takes, get this, a total of 16 hours to set up. Stage manager Trinity Wheeler has his hands full. His job is to make all of the aspects work together. Basically, once the show leaves the first city that we traveled with, where all of our directors and our staff were there, we're there to maintain the show, myself along with the resident director. We travel with everything from sound, lighting. This is the sound department. They're currently loading in, getting microphones ready. And the biggest challenge for Trinity is working with an enormous amount of people towards one common goal. It's just scheduling and timing and everything just lining up. And of course, actors have to be quick with their wardrobe changes throughout the scenes. And so the workers in this area make sure everything stays organized. We have a massive amount of wardrobe on the show. Each of the ensemble, the, the chorus people, play about 10 to 15 roles each. And so they each have basically a gondola each of costumes. And when it's all said and done, and all the I's are dotted and all the T's are crossed, the work for this guy isn't complete completely done until the curtain comes down tonight <laughs> about 10 30 tonight we'll say that was perfect and you can catch out Les Maisons Rob until Sunday at the BJCC great play you know I had a chance to do uh, that story just before opening night and they it was serious business I mean I could not distract the guys I was in their faces with right. the camera trying to distract them just serious business, 16 hours straight. Question for you, are you familiar with the line, as God is my witness, I'll never go hungry again? Or what about, frankly, my dear? Ooh. Mm -hmm. Well, you know the rest. Okay. Both are famous <laughs> lines from the classic, God with the wind. And you can't forget about, I don't know nothing about birth, no babies. <laughs>
Well done. Or, or what about, uh, <laughs> I can't think about that today. I'll think about it tomorrow. Yes, timeless quotes from a timeless story. The book turns 75, and you can get in on the celebration in Gaston. Oh, you must know the story, the classic love tale of Scarlett O'Hara and Rhett Butler. And if you happen to not know, I'm certain George Terrell can help you out. He's all about everything gone with the wind. Since seeing the film as a child in his hometown of Tuscumbia, he's been highly fascinated. Perhaps he was destined to be. His initials are GWT, very similar to GWTW, Gone with the Wind. That said, it's no question that he would open the world's largest current display of Gone with the Wind memorabilia. And the book was published June the 30th, 1936. The exhibit is called Gone with the Wind at 75, a diamond jubilee commemorating the 75th anniversary of the novel. We especially wanted to concentrate on book items because it was the book anniversary. Behind me, you can see to my right, a copy of Gone with the Wind in every language or from every country it's ever been published in. This is the first time we know of that the full set's ever been shown. He explains there's a big variation between the book and the film. For example, in the movie, Scarlett has one child. In the book, she has three children one by each of her husbands. Nevertheless, one thing George cannot deny is that it was the film that made Gone with the Wind so popular. And it's different wonders from the film that are on display at the Mary G. Harden Center for Cultural Arts in Gaston. You'll see Scarlett's bonnet, the replica of her wedding dress, Bunny Blue's outfit, Rhett's coat, and who can forget the hat that Rhett bought her as a gift? The exhibit even has the very chair Red Butler stood by when he said the famous line, Well, frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. You know, for decades, the characters of the story, Red, Scarlet, Ashley, Melanie, Mammy, have all won the hearts of families, not only here in the South, but across the world. And this exhibit, it aims to make that love a bit stronger. It's items from collectors from across the globe, many impossible to ever get your hands on. So we have the only known surviving Scarlett O'Hara soap in the world. We have the only known Scarlett O'Hara girdle. We have the only known tagged negligee. We have the only known wedding veil. We have the only known cotton ball holders of Scarlett and Red. A once in a lifetime opportunity that, before you know it, will be gone with the wind. The exhibit runs wow. through December 23rd. That's at the Mary G. Harden Center for Cultural Arts in Gaston.